question says that Baba said that Premasai would be born eight years after a physical death. And the same questioner says that he is not able to find the statement in any of the Swami's discourses. He has put that question to me, having known me as his translator for about 25 years. You are correct in putting me the in putting to me that question. Now, my answer is this. Baba saying that he will come after eight years to some of the devotees. Are the statements by the devotees at their personal level? Personally, Swami told me, well, how can I say no? So it may be at the personal level, or it may be at the individual level, or it may be an in, a, a, in a course of a conversation. But to my knowledge, he has not made this statement in public, on a platform, either in Purachandra or in Sai Kurunthal, or in any other public meeting, anywhere, at any center, like Madras or Delhi or Bombay. Thank you. Do you think Sai leadership have done everything possible to stop Madhu? What else can we do now? This is purely my personal view. I don't speak on behalf of anybody. I do not, I'm not official now. Now you take it personal. I don't think, I don't think that everything possible is done to stop Madhu by Sai leadership. I don't think that everything is done. I don't think so. Because what is done is not informed to anybody. Therefore nobody knows what is done in this direction. So when nobody knows what is done in this direction, how can I say everything is done by the leadership? I cannot say. So it is not to my knowledge, but personally feel enough is not done. That's what I personally feel. Thank you. God cannot get sick, but Baba became seriously ill and then he died in the hospital like all human beings. Do you think he decided to take humanity's karma through his illness to save us? Simple answer. God has taken human form. We will have to follow the law of the form he has taken. He has taken human form. So he has to follow the law of the human form. What is the law of the human form? Birth, growth, and death. Cyclic changes. So having taken human form, you have to follow the law of deha or the body. And relating to the sickness may be to prepare the devotees for the eventual situation to happen. Had he not taken upon himself this sickness, if his exit is suddenly announced, Oh, thousands of devotees might have committed suicide all over the world. So, Baba's sickness is a preparation for the devotees to meet that situation, eventual end. Baba withdrawing from the body is a preparation, not sickness. Another reason, when he said that you are not the body, how can you say that he is the body? When he delinked from the body, how do you say the sickness will affect him? Take for example Ramana Maharshi. Ramana Maharshi, when he was operated upon, many devotees came to see him. They asked Swami, are you suffering? Is that painful? Do you know what Ramana Maharshi said? Does my body look like that? Does my body look like that? Meaning, my body may be suffering, suffering. That is the gospel of Ramana Maharshi. And then people told Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Swami, you are because of throat cancer, you are not swallow, you are not able to swallow even a drop of water, Swami. You are not eating at all. How can we help you? Do you know what Paramahamsa said? 
When you are all eating, why should I eat separately? When you are all drinking water, why should I drink separately? It only means Paramahamsa, Ramana Maharshi, Bhagavan Baba, Shirdi Bhagavan. They have got totally delinked with their body. No suffering. Therefore, let us take like that. Then why this sickness? Only to prepare you for the end. That's how I feel. Thank you. I am a devotee of Paramahamsa Yogananda, but I also love Baba and also other masters like Mata Amrutananda Mai. They are all real masters, I think. Why Baba never mentioned them in his discourse? Baba did not mention the names during their discourse of the people you mentioned, other people you mentioned now. But he mentioned the names of Tukaram, Jnanadev, Paramahamsa, Ramana Maharshi, Arbindo, Jaydev, Ramdas, Meera. Many, many names he mentioned. He has not mentioned these names. Not with any other motive. It is only to see that your minds are not diverted. That your minds are not diluted. That you will have focused attention. But my view is this. Wherever you go, whosoever you listen to, people like of this type, not anybody. No, no, no. People of this type, as you mentioned, Mata Amrita Namai, Param Syogananda, people of that caliber, of that stature, when you listen to them, when they read their literature, you will find all that in 100% agreement with Baba's discourses and Baba's teachings. Then you will understand, I need not go anywhere. When all rivers Merge in ocean. When you go to ocean, you don't need to go to rivers. Do you? You don't need to visit every river because all rivers merge into ocean. Nadina, Sagarogati. All rivers merge into ocean. That's why holy dip in the ocean is an important step in sadhana. Holy dip in the ocean. What does it mean? That all dharmas merge over there. Therefore, my friends, he need not mention the names of this teacher, the contemporary people. Why? Because for you to find out the identity between the two and to see that you will, that you will develop focused attention on Swami. Thank you very much. Next question is from Sai Neelam Razu. What is the question? I visited Sat Sai Baba in the Sukshma Rupa in my early days. I had never had the darshan of Sat Sai Baba physically. That is one part of the question. When you have not visited physically, how do you think the Sukshma Swarupa you have seen is of Swami. You have not seen Baba and you have seen some Sukhma Swarupa elsewhere and you say that Sukhma Swarupa could possibly be Baba. Impossible. Swami said in his discourse clearly Sukhma Swarupa ends with the depth. As the physical body dies, the Sukhma Swarupa also disappears. Please refer to our earlier talks where with a reference Swami's message is quoted, quoted authentically. The page number and the volume and the date have been specifically mentioned. Therefore, it may be your imagination that Sukshma Swarupa you saw is of Baba's. Certainly not. Now the other point is, why I never visited Baba when he was alive? Here are two things. 
<coughs> that there are two wires through which the current flows, two things are expected. One, you are earning, you are pining, you are deep wish. Two, His grace. You should wish and you should also have His grace. When these two go together, you will have His darshan. You could not have His darshan maybe, that you didn't have that innate deep desire within. When there is a deep desire within you, akanksha, deep innate desire, it will be granted by Baba. There is no doubt about it. Proportionate to your sincere desire, proportionate to your honest, honest desire to see him, the pining, the yearning, avedana, he will respond. Therefore, maybe from your side, uh, it, that depth might be lacking. How to connect to Baba now? To connect to Baba then, now, in future is only one thing. Nama Smarana. Sing His glory. Sing His glory. Do bhajans. You can immediately connect Him. Put on the switch, current flows. Put on the switch, fan revolves. Start singing bhajan, you will have experience. Nama Smarana is one step. One channel. The second channel to connect to Him is reading his literature, read his books, be familiar with his message. That's one way of getting connected to him. Third way, spend the time with devotees of Baba. Participate in service activity. So, service activity on one hand, Namasmana other hand, reading his literature above all will connect you to Baba any time, then, now, and in future. Thank you. Here is a question from Terry Bettoni. This is the question. Well, I visited Puttaparthi recently. I have come to know many of the experiences and emotions. I no longer feel the same desire for research, I no longer feel the same enthusiasm. Why should it happen? There may be inner silence, the statement says. Well, this is my answer. You may listen to experiences and might have been thrilled, excited at one time. And your, your emotions also might have been built up at one time. But, but over a period of time, the, listen, the experience that you hear, they become casual, usual and a routine. The first experience may be exciting, but the experiences to follow later, repeatedly, will not keep that flame ablaze, that fire ablaze, no. With the passage of time, that enthusiasm declines. That, that, that feeling, what you said, that feeling of spirituality declines. Now, my friend, this is my answer. Listening to the experiences, speaking about experiences, is one stage in spiritual path to get charged, to get emotional, to get uh, to convinced, to develop faith. That is one stage. To develop faith, to get convinced. Yes, we listen to experiences and we share our experiences. In the second stage, these experiences won't appeal to us any longer. Meaning, inner search started. Experiences are outside. Experience is inside. Having gone through all the experiences in the outer world, 
we want to experience the inner world. So the search from within begins. The outer search is over. The inner search begins now. Because outer search has given me enough of inspiration, enough of experience. That's enough. Now let me go to inner search. My friend, I feel you have gone to higher step now. That's why you are no longer feeling that much of enthusiasm today. That much emotional as in the past. The reason is you are in the second stage of taking to some sadhana, doing some kind of meditation. That's what is required. Inner such is the time for you. Thank you. The next question, Fiorella Pitochi. The question is this. I would like to know if Swami met Grigori Grabovoy in 90s, the Russian scientist and clairvoyant. Not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. Swami mentioned many of the Westerners who met him, they are all on record. But I don't see this name you mentioned. That's what all I can say about this question. Next question. <laughs> it is related to history. Reading on the internet I found that Sanskrit was taken to India by the Aryan race. If this was so, could be that Vedas were taken to India by the same Aryan race. It is a question related to history. My question is this, whether the food is from Western Canteen or Eastern Canteen or North Indian Canteen should appease, should satiate my hunger, my appetite, whatever the food may be. It may be British airline or American airline or any airline, it should take you to the destination. What if if Sanskrit is from Aryans or Dravidians or Persians or so what? We are not bothered who brought it here and whose invention it is. But as for Vedas, I know that purely uh, compositions of sages, seers and saints by recapitulating all that has been told, all that has been heard. Therefore, they are called Srutis. Surta meaning hearing. So, by hearing those divine voices, the saints and sages could pass on that knowledge from generation to generation. That's what Veda is. It's also called Smriti. Smriti meaning recapitulation. All the darshan, all the beautiful visions they had, they started recapitulating. They started memorizing and pass on to the rest of the generations. That's how Vedic literature has been handed to us right down uh, this time, to this age. Therefore, let's not question Aryan or Dravidian. They are purely of the saints, of the sages. That's what it is. Thank you. When the leadership has not acted in the way you expected, have not acted in the way they should. The question is, what else can we do now? Yes. One, stand as an example for yourself. Be an example to everybody. None can dilute my faith. None can deviate. None can divert. None can convince me if that steadiness, with that firmness, if you stand an example, none can influence you. Number two, we have friends, we have relations, we have acquaintances, we know many people, we can help them. Don't get confused by these false statements. Don't confuse by these uh, false claims. Know the truth. 
This is what Baba said. Why do you act against it? This is what Baba's teachings are. Why do you go against it? So, this kind of informing people, sharing Swami's message on these matters, is a great service to those people who are convinced, who are confused. It's a great service to those people who have two minds, to be or not to be. It's a great service to those people who have already gone along the wrong path. By spreading his message, authentically, we can bring them back to the track. We can also clear the doubts, help the confused that way, while strengthening our own faith and devotion to Swami. Thank you. Sarama, Sri Krishna.